What you're looking at here is the new Samsung Galaxy Book Flex Alpha. And while the Flex lineup was highly anticipated, almost nobody's talking about the Alpha. So this is a full review of this 13.3 inch laptop, which is selling for hundreds of dollars less than its cousin, the Galaxy Book Flex. Now on paper, this has very impressive specs. So how did Samsung manage to make this for hundreds of dollars less, and is it a better buy than the Galaxy Book Flex? So in this video, I want to dive in and actually test this out and show you guys how well this actually performs, including webcam tests, speaker tests, and everything else you'll probably want to know before considering buying this laptop. And so right off the bat, I actually bought this with my own money because it's a laptop I'm interested in using myself. I think it's a pretty impressive laptop, but we'll find out in this video if it's actually as good as Samsung claims it to be. And, and so let's start off with a physical tour of this laptop just to see what we're working with here. And so starting off on the right side, we have this small little groove that's actually on the right and left side. I believe it doesn't do anything. I think it's just aesthetic. Then we have a small power button. We have a micro SD slot. Then we have two USB 3.0 ports. You can tell because they have blue on the inside. And on the left side, we have a headphone jack, which is nice to have. It doubles as a microphone jack as well. We have a USB Type-C, more on that in a second. We have HDMI, and then we have our power port. This laptop has an all-aluminum body with boxy corners and gem-cut edges to give it a really nice premium feel. And when looking at the screen, it's a QLED display that's 13.3 inches, displaying in 1080p. And on top of that, it's a touchscreen with more than 1 billion colors that gets up to 600 nits. Now, that's a lot of specs right there, but basically what it means is you're not dealing with a 4K screen screen here, but you're dealing with really great color, really great brightness, and a very responsive touch screen. Let's look at the inside of this laptop. If we open it up, you'll see that first of all, it folds all the way back into a tablet. It's pretty common. A lot of laptops have that hinge style these days. Uh, but I find that the really slim bezels on here make it a, a relatively usable tablet. I know some of the other ones, like a 15 or 17 inch laptop, would make really no sense to me to use as a tablet because it's just absolutely massive, unless you're doing like drawing and stuff like that. Uh, but if you're just like going to a meeting and you want to hold it and like draw with your finger, um, this is actually a pretty reasonable size for a tablet. It's also reasonably light coming in at about two and a half pounds and the thickness is only 0.55 inches. Uh, so definitely very travel friendly as well. Now looking at the keyboard, we have some interesting things on here uh, besides just a regular keyboard, including this giant blue button on the right side that I'll talk about in a second. And so the keyboard in itself, I think is a relatively decent keyboard. I know some people like really big mechanical clicky keys. This is definitely more in the side of light, quiet keys, uh, which I think kind of fits the MO of this product. It's supposed to be light for travel. If you're on an airplane, you don't want to be clicking really loud. Uh, you want to have like some nice quiet typing, which this keyboard definitely enables you to do. And on top of that, it does have backlighting. The backlighting on these keys works in a dark setting, but in a brighter environment, you'll see that it's definitely not the most even lighting, uh, but you know, for the most part, it does the job. Now, talking about the keys across the top, we have some really cool functions that Samsung makes this Windows laptop feel kind of like, uh, you know, you can tell it's made by Samsung. They have some cool features that they snuck in there alongside what Windows already has. And so looking across the top, the first one, F1, is going to be your settings, and it brings up your Samsung settings. And you have some cool things like going into silent mode uh, and things like that, depending on where your environment is. Then we have volume down, volume up. Uh, we have, of course, the, the sharing your screen. Uh, you can turn the trackpad off, mute, volume down, volume up. All of those are pretty standard. Then we have the backlight of the keys, and you can change it from 0 to 30% to 60% and up to 100%. So having different levels, I find, is very useful. If you're in a really dark environment, sometimes it's nice to not have the keys at 100% brightness. To the right of that is actually a really cool feature that is specific to this laptop, and it's something that really makes this laptop stand out. So they talk a lot about the QLED display and all the advertisements for this, uh, and really the benefit here is the colors are better and it's a brighter laptop than a lot of other LED displays. And so when I say it's brighter, if you just turn the brightness up, it doesn't really get necessarily that much brighter until you press this button right here, the F10 key, uh, which brings it into kind of like an overdrive mode. And it makes it very, very bright that it's easier to see outside, as you can see right here, even in broad daylight, 
uh, I'm to completely able to see the laptop and work on it more so than I am pretty much any other laptop I'm typically used to using. Then the F11 key is a really nice security benefit of this laptop where you can disable the webcam. So instead of putting a piece of tape on the top, uh, you can just press that and it'll turn off the webcam. Uh, so if you're worried about hackers using your webcam, you can do that and it should add an extra layer of protection there. And of course, to the right of that, we have our search key for just a quick app search on your laptop. Now the blue key on the right side of the keyboard is actually a fingerprint sensor and of all the fingerprint sensor I've used, uh, I found that this one is actually surprisingly fast and accurate. Uh, so that's definitely a really good thing compared to something like the HP Spectre or really any of the HP laptops. They generally struggle with fingerprint sensors and you have to get exactly the right angle. This one I find that is very forgiving and it's still very accurate uh, and it's very, very fast. As you can see right here, as soon as I tap my finger on there, it signs in instantly. It really feels like a seamless experience. It's really great to see so many ports on a 13 inch laptop. I know a lot of other laptops like the MacBook, for example, uh, they only have like two USB Type-C ports on there. And so it's great that we have USB Type-A on here. We've got an HDMI, we've got a lot of ports on here, but the drawback with this one, and it's something that I've seen a lot of people complain about, is the USB Type-C. They only have one port, first of all, and then the second issue is that it's not a Thunderbolt, which means that it doesn't have the highest speed you want if you're trying to connect like multiple 4K monitors to this. You can't do that with this regular USB Type-C port. And then really the biggest one that people don't like is that you cannot charge with this USB Type-C port. I know a lot of other ones, a lot of other laptops accept USB Type-C charging. And when you're traveling, it is really nice just to bring a small USB Type-C cable. Now, I mentioned before that this is a very capable laptop and I'm not gonna get too into specs. I'll just link them down below in the description if you're interested. But to give you guys an idea, the processor in here is a 10th generation i7. So that's the newest, has eight logical processors. It has 12 gigabytes of RAM. And and I believe this one right here, the one I got, has 256 gigabytes of solid state storage. So all of that makes it a very light laptop, but still easily powerful enough to do any kind of 3D rendering or edit videos on Premiere Pro. It's all very possible with this laptop. And I think more people now than ever really need to use their laptop for Zoom calls and Skype calls. So let's get into a camera and microphone test to see how well it actually performs. All right, guys, so I am in my studio right now. This is what it looks like and sounds like. I believe the two microphones are on the top of the screen above the camera. There's a little blue light next to the camera as well, but comment down below. Let me know how this looks and sounds. I have some really good lighting in here, but it's still a little bit grainy just because it's a very tiny sensor there. But again, comment, let me know how this looks and how this sounds. Now, something you might've noticed when looking at this laptop is that you can't actually see the speakers when looking at it from the top. And generally that's not necessarily a good thing for sound quality. It's good for making a compact laptop, but let's get into a speaker test to see how well they actually sound. All right, so definitely not the best bass or the loudest speakers, but I was expecting a lot worse. And so another test I like to do is a hinge stability test. So starting off with the laptop closed, if I just pull up gently, you'll see that it does open without lifting the bottom half of the laptop. So that's a good sign right there. And it seems to stay open at any level I want. Although if I close it down to probably right below 15 degrees, it starts to slowly close under its own weight. So I think that's pretty standard though. Most people are not gonna have it that closed and want it to be open. Uh, but something that I did notice is that a lot of hinges like this tend to be a little wobbly. So if I just jiggle the laptop around a little bit, it definitely has some hinge wobble, but not nearly to the extent of like the 15 inch HP Spectre. So Samsung also added a lot of apps on here, as you can see down here. So they have like pen up, Samsung Notes, they've got voice things, they've got, of course, decks if you plug your laptop into here. And then here is something I think is really specific to this laptop that I like is the Samsung security options where we have four big things across the top. So you can block recording, as I mentioned before, and you can do that very easily with the button on the keyboard or by switching it here. You have security camera, which is a cool feature where if you walk away from your laptop and somebody else tries to log in, it'll take a picture of them and email it to you on your phone uh, so you can see who's trying to mess with your laptop while you're gone. They have secret screen, which if I try that out right now, you can see if we just go to uh, the Windows key and then F11. So if we just open up maybe like this Alexa screen, for example, uh, we say Windows F11, and it goes into this kind of 50% opacity mode. I don't know if it's necessarily harder to see for other people around you, but maybe for yourself as well. Um, something that you may be interested in. And of course, right here, the privacy folder, which is a locked folder that's hidden on your laptop that you need 
to use either your biometrics or your password to sign into. And then if you just press Windows key and F12, it'll automatically hide that and open your browser so it doesn't look like you were sitting there just looking at your desktop suspiciously. Then they also have link sharing on here, which allows you to send larger files very easily. Uh, just a lot of other features like that, including also you have Amazon Alexa on this laptop if you want to use it. So now, of course, there are some differences between this laptop and the Galaxy Book Flex, not Alpha. And some of the differences include the lack of Qi wireless charging on the trackpad. So on this laptop, you can't just set your phone or Galaxy Buds on the trackpad and expect them to charge. Now, secondly, this does not have an S Pen on the side as the more expensive model does. And for those of you wondering if the S Pen works on this, it does not work on this laptop. But what does work, I have right here just a standard you know, Windows Pen. If, if This one is from the HP Spectre, for example, and it works. You can draw on there all you want. So you don't have to worry about not having a pen with this laptop. It just won't be the S Pen. But this one still works very well from my testing. And then of course, as I mentioned before, this laptop is not capable of USB Type-C charging, and it's only available in this one silver color, while the other one, uh, the Galaxy Book Flex, has this really cool blue looking color. And if that's really important to you, you could spend a couple, heck, a couple hundred extra dollars and buy that. Uh, but I think for most people, you still have the i7 processor here, you still have a really small, really light, and very capable laptop at a significantly lower price. All right, so there you have it. That's what I have to say about the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex Alpha. Overall, I think it's a really great laptop. It's a small, light design, folds back into a tablet. I think it's great for traveling, great for anybody looking to you know, edit on Photoshop, and you're looking for a powerful laptop that's small enough to go with you. Also has a great screen on there, it has a really great battery life as well, and on top of that, some added Samsung functionality in the apps it has on here. So besides just a fingerprint sensor, you have some other great security things like the ability to turn off the camera or have that kind of hidden screen thing going on. Uh, so things like that just really add to the experience with this laptop. And I think they did a great job of not intruding on what Windows already does, but adding to it and complementing into making this really robust laptop, honestly. So that's what I'd say about it, guys. I like this laptop. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of it, if you like it or not. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.